making robot neon for the B9 robot from Lost in Space. This is something that was very tricky for me to learn how to make. Look how I'm holding the glass. So, yeah, uh, this guy come to me about 14 years ago. We used to make these in four units. Now we make them in three. I figured out a way to make these in three units, but it took me, gosh, six months. But when you love what you do, time is nothing. Time ain't a factor. You just practice and figure out a way. Robot neon. You got to keep these uh, quarter inch apart from each other. Very, very tricky. I'm always holding the glass out to the side when I do these bends. I'm basically pinching the glass over to the left so I can heat this up good. And then uh, I'll bend it around and I got a little quarter inch wide piece of wood that I stick in between so I can make sure that I got a good gap but a lot of it's eye. You really got to use your eye. Because this is just the first step to this process. In order to keep this puzzle going, I got to bend over this bend and then my next bend is gonna be really close to this stick because I have to lay this on something that's gonna arc the whole tube later. And when that happens, it opens up to the quarter inch it needs to be. That took me forever to figure that out. Trial and error. Back in the fire with this funky neon. I'm gonna do a drop bend and I'm gonna keep it really close to this other stick. Cause when I lay it on my template to arc it over, it's gonna open up to the gap I need it to. Bottom half of the robot, top. This is all one unit. Um, when I start doing these bends, it gets really tricky because you'll start to heat up the glass next to this bend and everything wants to move. And so I'll over bend this bend so it moves back. So I, I get it right and then I pull out a little bit. Now, when I go to do the next bend, actually the next bend is going to be fine. After you start heating these up when they're so close to each other, they want to move on you. So I already got this marked. I have two different little spacers here that I use. So after uh, I get this uh, all hot, I'm going to do most of this bend right in the fire, put it in your face, blow. Use your spacer, then I pull it back out a little bit. It's a trick I had to learn. And I'm about to heat up a bend right here next to this bend, and that makes everything and then you think you're doing something wrong but you're not because as it cools it goes right back to where it was originally it's a mind game it screws with my mind man it took me forever to figure this out you guys but once I figured it out I think I've had over 400 of these all over the world the guy I make these for ships these everywhere Apparently, there's a big demand for robot neon mouth neon for the B9 robot. A lot of guys like to build their own robots. So I've been making these for, I think, 12 years. I know I've made at least, I make at least 30 of them a year, minimum. 
Add that up, that's like almost 400. And they go everywhere. Usually I do seven to 10 at a time. This batch is four of them. So yeah, you can't really pay attention to anything else you've been, you just gotta focus on the bends you're doing because you'll go try to reheat stuff up that you don't need to. And it's a waste of time. You just gotta get this part done. And then you can move on to the next part, which is a really funky weld that I'll be showing you guys real soon. Yeah, and then after I get that weld done, I have to lay this glass. Actually, I tape it to a template, heat it up in certain spots so it can fall over the template into an arc. <laughs> uh. Pretty cool, though. I figured this out. And since I figured it out, you know, I made hundreds of these. I got a sharp file. I'm gonna try to go with this big, bigger one here. Right on my line. I like to do my splice inside of the arc. Then you just pull it right off. Now, I'm going to weld this to this. Yeah. Even with that little funkiness there, I can do it. Got the tube. Got to cork the one end. But yeah, now I'm gonna. See how close this is? You gotta pinch it over here to move it away over here. See that? Okay. This is tricky, guys. Turn my stuff down a little bit. I just try to be comfortable, don't take my eyes off of anything. Later on, I gotta reheat this up. So you wanna do a decent weld right off the bat. That's why I like to do a bunch of these in a row, get in a rhythm. The toughest reverse weld ever. I focus on this. I think about this weld at night when I'm bending these. You gotta get this weld hot because you're gonna have to reheat it again later. I feel like I'm in jail right now, you guys. These are flat. Oh, actually, this one's curved. I just did this one. This one's flat. And the way you curve it, 
If you tape it to this template, it's got a little curve on it. Now I'm going to heat it up. And use this spacer to make sure my space is correct. I've got a timer. Hand torch. And right under the bend, I'm going to heat up. I usually go 30 seconds. Get your template ready. Now you can go in, reheat this bend up, and it'll fall over this arc. Starting to fall down. Grab your spacer. Ain't good for it. Heater must have turned on. I lost all my gas. Still losing it. There we go. Alright, that's good. Now I'm pulling back out on this bend a little on this side with my spacer because it, it wasn't cool as it wants to crimp back in. Now I flip it around, pull my spacer, and it didn't flatten. Got to make sure that you push down good. There we go. Now I can flip it. Going to this one. Heating up underneath the bend. There's a weld on this one, so you gotta heat it up really good. Once it's been about 30 seconds, you're good to go in. And then I reheat this glass up so it's all soft again. See it fall down? Whoa. Now this next bend. I'm going to heat this guy up. That's why this is so close to this bend. Because once this falls over, this gap opens up extremely. That took me a long time to figure out. And now, once again, I'm heating up underneath the bend. I got a timer right here. I just watch when it gets to 30 seconds. I'm good. As long as you get this glass good and hot the first time, you don't have to get it too hot to get it go back in. Alright. Got 
got my spacer. Starting to fall down. I can open it up. tricky stuff right here but you just gotta patience timer hot torch get everything hot and then you end up uh, arcing it right around good gaps he's got some spacers that he glues the gap well, this one could probably be heated up a little bit I'll go back and forth on these until they all look good and then uh, set it aside the next process is welding the electrodes on close to these tight bends that's tricky too and then you got to pump the thing processing ain't so bad i these things they really uh take good to the manifold really i know what to expect when i'm pumping one but these things swell and unswell and like it just yeah uh, there you go robot neon i lost count of the steps in this process i'm going to do the electrodes now got a handle i got my tubulation welded on nice handle i gotta weld these on and then bend it across them curves Just slowly heating up the glass. And when it's ready, I'm gonna raise it up, kind of twist the glass a little bit to follow the pattern. Another weld, other end. I previously welded this electrode on the wrong end, so I had to cut it off, but I'm reusing it. Now, this tubulated electrode has to be on the outside. I may have forgotten that. Now you just heat up right next to the tubulated electrode. Because I've already got this hot, so it's not going to take long. Pull it up. Next step is manifold. V9 robot. It's gonna light up red. Uh, time mill electrodes, I don't even uh, raise it up to an amp. Stay right under an amp for a while. Still climbs pretty good. I'm at 60 Celsius. It's been 20 seconds. This should get up to 100 by a minute. The electrodes are really close together, so I got some mica blocking the voltage. at 100 
I thought yours looked good. I'll let this suck out for. I always turn my amps down when I light it back up and then I adjust. That's air lighting up, folks. Air captured in the tube with electricity applied to it will light up. That's like a lightning bolt captured inside of a tube, basically. Air is a great conductor. It's got moisture in it. All right, I'm uh, at around two amps, 114 Celsius. I'll try to get this to 250, it's 10 mil. 250 Celsius, that's about 600 degrees, almost 600 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm at 130. It's gonna stay here, two amps. I'll let it slowly climb. Not much impurities in clear glass, but there are, they're there. Two and a half amps. I'm gonna stay here till I get to 200. Once I get to 200, I'm going to increase the amps to 3 amps. I'm not letting out that air. I want it to heat up the glass. So now I'm going to count to like 15 on my little handy dandy timer. Almost at 250, I'm cutting it off at 250. Good. Now you let it suck out all them impurities through this vacuum pump here and my diffusion pump. I leave my diffusion pump set at four and a half in the winter, about three in the summertime. It really does make a difference. Adding in some neon. Tubes cooled down enough. Take it up to 12. Turn my amps down. Check it. Now I'm going to tip it off. Once this glass heats up, kind of move the torch away and pull on it follow the glass now this is the tricky part so I don't crack this I'm gonna put my 15 mil electrode holder right over top of this electrode Now, I can heat this up, tip it off safely. So this is the face for the B9 robot. 
basically does this, blinks when the robot talks. 